Hello, Erica here, and I'm here today to do reviews of the three short story collections that I read in February. Those collections are The Color Master by Amy Bender, Bobcat and Other Stories by Rebecca Lee, and This Is How You Lose Her by Yuno Diaz. First, I want to talk about This Is How You Lose Her by Yuno Diaz. This collection was published in 2010 and is 240 pages. It is the most recent of Yuno Diaz's major works. He's best known for his Pulitzer Prize winning novel, The Grief Wanderer's Life of Oscar Wow, and I have read that and Drown, as well as this now. There are nine stories in this collection, and a lot of them I really liked. A few of them fell a little flat for me, but I didn't give anything in the collection, I don't think, less than three stars. The collection is a series of interconnected stories, so very much like his collection Drown, it follows Junior, who is the main character of The Brief Wonder's Life of Oscar Wow and his family, and gives a little bit more depth to his story. You know Diaz's writing is very gritty, very down to earth, and very straightforward. He doesn't beat around the bush, he is not afraid of using slang, he is not afraid of cursing, <laughs> like None of those things, so if you're not really into coarse language, I would recommend avoiding his work. Junior is an interesting Latino character written by a Latino author, and this tells the story of his experiences with women in particular. Um, I was very worried about this book because female characters aren't always treated the best by Yuno know, Diaz, but when I started to think about it, it's not so much that his female characters aren't fully developed, it's not that he's not writing real female characters. It's that the male characters that he writes are so disdainful of women and treat women so poorly <laughs> that it's not funny. But it's like, these characters are not the type of men you want to date. And so this collection tells the story of various women who Junior has either slept with or dated and how he ultimately ends up screwing up their relationships, screwing over the women by cheating on them or what have you, usually cheating on them. Um, I thought it was a very insightful collection. I think that, you know, Diaz, there's a reason that he is so highly praised, and that is that he very much embodies the male Latino experience. And I would definitely recommend this, especially if you've read his other works and are a fan of them. You could also start here with him, um, even though it does portray Junior, and I would really recommend starting with The Brief Wonders Life of Oscar Wilde. But if you don't want to get into something as lengthy as that or get into a novel, you could definitely do this. In the end, I ended up giving this collection three and a half out of five stars. Next, I have The Color Master by Amy Bender. This was published in 2013, and I believe it is Bender's most recent collection. She does have a few others. Um, there are 15 stories in this collection, and it is 240 pages long. A lot of the stories are not too long at all. And these stories are broken down into three different sections in the book. So there are five stories in each of the three sections, and they're just called Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3. I haven't really had the time to sit down and consider why they were broken down like that, but it's something I'm interested in looking into in the future. Amy Bender writes magical realism that dips more towards the fantasy side than the realism side of life. And Amy Bender just kind of... I feel like expects the reader to accept the bizarre elements of her stories and to tie them into the bizarre elements of real life as well. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this collection. I cannot wait to read more by Amy Bender. Her writing is really, really stunning in a very simplistic way. I'll read you a little bit from one of the middle of the stories. It's not going to spoil anything. Going through the same routine, saying the same phrases I have now said many times, the big statements, the grand revelations about my childhood and character, the cautious revealings of insecurities. I have said them already, and they sit in the minds of those who are outliving lives I have no access to anymore. So that's just an example of how she kind of grounds her magical realism and the fantastical elements of her stories in the harsh reality that we all live in. In the end, I gave this collection four stars, and I'm really anticipating reading more Amy Bender soon. The last collection I'm going to talk about is Bobcat and Other Stories by Rebecca Lee. This was published in 2009 and has 209 pages. There are only seven stories in this collection, so it's a pretty quick collection to get through. 
Rebecca Lee's stories are a little bit lengthier than either you know Diaz's or Amy Bender's, but they're really stunning. There are no magical realism elements to be found here. There's no profanity, really. Um, it's a very different style of writing than either of the previous two collections I've spoken about. I know a lot of people love this collection. I did too. I ended up giving it four stars. But since I finished it, it hasn't resonated with me as much as the other two. I'm not really trying to compare them all, but they are all written in the same medium, so there's that. Um, Rebecca Lee's stories are set against academic backdrops a lot of the time, or her characters are academics. And there's this continuous theme of unrequited love and how we deal with our fates in romance. I liked almost all these stories. I think there were two in here that weren't my favorites, but they always left me thinking. They were pretty haunting at the time, and after I would finish one, there was no way that I could start another one because I had a lot to digest from each story. I did feel at times that the stories dragged on a little bit too much for me, but that being said, she does have some amazing characters that were developed very well in short stories. I highly recommend giving this collection a shot as well. I think this would be a great collection for lovers of literary fiction who aren't necessarily huge fans of reading short stories because they are a little bit lengthier and they definitely are literary fiction more than anything else. So yes, those are the three short story collections that I read in February. If you've read any of these, please let me know in the comments and I hope to talk to you soon. Bye!